All right. We did it. We're amazing. <laughs> Why'd they give up so quick? <laughs>
very happy to see that. Uh, and we'll see what we can do. That's very good for us. That should help quite a bit. Uh, and I think I'm just going to pass here, actually. Uh, the only reason I'm doing this is so that way, if they happen to throw a creature out that we can block... Uh, interesting. Okay, we'll go ahead and throw this out now. Uh, there's really no reason not to. Um, I expect that they're going to take either the Crippling Fear or the Nighthawk Scavenger. Both of, the, both of those are very, very good cards uh, against this, so we'll see how it goes. Um, also, guys, one thing I was kind of toying around with, I've been going through my collection, so I'm, I'm, I'm asking for your advice a little bit here. Uh, but I'm going through my collection, and I've got a handful of cards, um, and I'll, I'll just do this. Uh, just like full arts and, you know, uh, little promos, things like that. Some of those I don't particularly need to hold on to, uh, at least in my opinion, I don't need to hold on to them. And, uh, so I'm curious to know, do you guys, like, would you guys be interested in doing, like, auctions? Do you want to do any kind of, uh, let's do this any kind of sales or would it make sense just to literally throw them out as a for sale kind of thing um let's do this i'm happy to attack here we mill a couple cards i feel like that's probably worth it if they want to block that's great um looks like they don't that's fine by me um and just curious if that's something that you'd be interested in doing i think auctions would be kind of fun um it would add a little bit more hype to it uh versus just open up open, open selling on like tcg player or something like that so i'm just i was just curious what your thoughts were uh if you have an opinion on it or if you'd like to get something out of those that's great if not don't worry about it it's all good just curious all right this is really annoying because that does make crippling fear a lot worse um, I am going to block here. That gains us a little bit of life. Uh, it also just gets something off the field, which we kind of just have to do. Um, alright, uh, there's not a whole lot we can do here, unfortunately. I guess we can... Huh. I really, really, really wish we could do a bit more here, but I don't know that we can. I think we're just kind of in a bad position, so... I guess we just throw out the suspicious stowaway. Um, it's not great. I think we're just gonna get outpowered here, uh, which I mean, it is what it is. All right, now I wish I had left up, saw it coming, <laughs> uh, but that's fine. Sure. Interesting. Okay. Um, I'm gonna double block here. They can only kill one of these, which is useful. <laughs> Um, I suspect it's the stowaway, yeah. Alright, um, again, not great, but it is what it is. Can really only do this and this. We'll enter that tapped. And I mean, we're pretty dead here. Uh, there's very little we can do. Um, but again, it's okay, we're here for the learning experience. So, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and concede, guys. Let's, excuse me, let's go ahead and jump into game two. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. Uh, and this is honestly a much better hand. I will happily keep this. What this allows us to do is Ruin Crab turn one, and then turn two, we actually just get to leave up the Thought Thief or the Infernal Grasp, and hopefully we'll keep ourselves in a much better position here. Um, so I definitely like this. We also have the Zareth Sand that we can start to use later on. Um, Ruin Crab is also great against blocking these little shambling gas and, you know, things that just... Are annoying they don't really deal a ton of damage it's just kind of an annoying card uh that might be something worth just infernal grasping um or that i don't know we'll see um let's go ahead and throw out this that is gonna mill a few cards here which is nice uh all right we did it we're amazing <laughs> why'd they give up so quick <laughs> All right, let's move on. All right, guys, here we are for our third game. Uh, and, uh, like, this isn't great, but I think we try it. Uh, we've got tons of stowaways. The problem is this comes in tapped. Uh, if that was an untapped blue source, that would be so much better because we could get the wind robber down, then get the stowaway down next turn. We would just even out a lot more, uh, but that's okay. 
Let's do this. Let's go ahead and get that stowaway out there. Uh, this is a nice little unblockable threat so we can get something going. Oh, man. Coffee in the morning. Nothing like it. Um, what is this deck? Is this just a... This is silly. This is really silly. Um, I'm gonna pass. So, the reason I'm passing here... I I'm gonna hint at something really important. Uh, is that we didn't draw a land. And we also have something that cannot really do anything. Block or uh, I mean, this has been pacified, so we really can't do too much. But what we can do is surprise block this, which just gets something off the field. It's not necessarily great, but it's something. Um, all right, let's play a stowaway. Uh, and I am going to attack here because we do need to start milling some stuff. Wow, that was actually two really decent cards to mill. Um, we do need to start milling some stuff here. We also got to swap that werewolf over, so that's really helpful. Um... I mean, we are going to be taking some damage, but we need lands here. Like, badly need lands. Charm Stray is a very interesting addition to this deck here. Uh, I'm just going to take it all. I know it's a lot of damage, but... Gotta do what we gotta do. Um, Alright. I'm going to attack again with everything. Again, just trying to mill some stuff. They just get to block this, which is fine. But we get to draw and discard a card. Are you serious? Uh, wow. Okay, well, I mean... We're just not getting anywhere, are we? Um... I mean, I guess we just throw this out. We, like, this would be great. Uh, it would get rid of all these stupid little 1-1s one at the very least. Um... Which is, I mean, a handful of things. We're pretty just dead here, though. We're just not getting lands. Uh, so far, deck is not showing up to its uh, original potential, I will say. Uh, that we initially saw in, like, Zendikar Rising and all that stuff. So, that's fine, though. We'll, we'll see what we can do. Um, and maybe this attack, the Soaring Thought Thief attack, wasn't ideal. But I feel like we need to get cards, like, milled. Um, so I feel like it's somewhat worth it. I'm gonna kill the Charm Stray, because, I mean, we're just dead here, though, I guess, right? Yeah, all right. I didn't count that, but we were pretty dead anyway. That's fine. Let's move on to game number four? Four. Yeah, game number four. All right, guys, here we are for game number four. Uh, man. <laughs> Mana issues galore, it seems like. Uh, we do have this and the Crippling Fear. I feel like the right call is to mulligan, but I'm going to try it. Because you know what? Who cares? We're going to try. <laughs> this is a bad keep. Let me just be very clear. If we don't get a blue source, we're pretty much dead in the water. Uh, I mean, we do have the scavenger and we do have crippling fear, so it's not like we're just without plays, but uh, that was very clutch. <laughs> Let's go ahead and throw this out. Uh, getting this down is very, very nice. Um, obviously, it might just need a removal spell, which is fine. Um, but hopefully, 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 we can at least get an attack in with it. Um, we'll see. We've got plenty of threats to kind of maintain here. Okay. So this is probably going to be some kind of like just mono black kill everything kind of deck, uh, which is fine. I'm going to play the Scavenger out. We'll see if they can kill that too. Uh, the Scavenger is a really nice separator in games where because it deals damage and gains life uh, and just blocks so well with the uh, Death Touch and flying, like, it's just kind of an all-around really good, efficient creature. Um, and so this most likely will eat a removal spell, but if it doesn't, I mean, we're pretty well set, uh, to be honest. Excuse me, I keep burping. Um, apparently coffee makes me, like, burp a little bit, so my bad. <laughs> uh, let's do this. I'm gonna play a Soaring Thought Thief first. What this does is when a rogue attacks, it's gonna trigger, so we get to mill a couple cards here. Uh, which powers this up, but also gets us closer to the plus on the Soaring Thought Thief here. Um, and again, we're gonna save that Crippling Fear. Granted, they can use it to 
I mean, they can use the sculptor here to to ramp some stuff out, but now it's a much more enticing card because we can two for one with it. Um, and that devalues obviously the ranger class as well, which is helpful. So I assume they're going to kill something here. Um, honestly, though, I don't know what the right call is. The Soaring Thought Thief is really going to hammer away at their their deck here, but the Scavenger is obviously more damaged, so like they could go either way with it. Um, I'll block. That was interesting. Um, <laughs> I wonder why they did that. Um, all right, let's do this. We want to say rogue. Uh, oh, that is a rogue. Oh, that's really funny. Okay. Uh, that's fine. I actually didn't realize that was a rogue. That's hilarious. Oh, I mean, you got me on that one. <laughs> uh, that's cool. We at least got one of their things. Could we have named human rogue, vampire rogue? Nah, I think that was still the right call then. That's fine. We also, I mean, again, Nighthawk Scavenger has done some work already this game, so that's fine. Like, we've separated the life total, negative eight on their side and plus eight on our side. Like, that's pretty substantial. Um, and at this point, what we get to do is maybe leave up a saw it coming if we foretell it and then leave it up, we're in decent shape. Um, what this also allows us to do is if we'd like, we can Soaring Thought Thief. I think... I think we're just going to attack in here. Oh, we got a Scoot Swarm. That's very helpful. Okay. So we're going to deal a couple points of damage to him. Nothing crazy. We've obviously been slowed down a good bit thanks to that. But um, I think that's okay. Let's go ahead and counter this. Uh, this thing can get out of control just with these snow decks. So I'd rather go ahead and counter it here. It also did take a majority of their mana. So if they have a follow up play, it will likely be worse. Uh, and so it was pretty, that was a pretty clear counter in my opinion. Um, sure. All right. Uh, there's the marsh. Uh, that's not bad. And here, I mean, I think we just get to throw some stuff out. This actually comes out on Nightbound. That's really nice. All right, let's attack in here. That's going to trigger both of these. Oh, we got a Vorinclex and a Scoot Swarm. Now, worth noting here, guys, uh, they, they... Okay, never mind. Excuse me. So they can't play things from their graveyard. That's really nice. They can play stuff off the top, which is scary, but uh, we should be okay. We also have flying here, so we're... And an unblockable threat. Like, we're, I think, okay. Um... <laughs> But we'll see. We will see. Uh, if they attack with this, obviously we just don't block. Okay. So they're going to activate the Ranger class is my guess, but they don't have any mana to do anything with now, so we just attack in. All right, guys, we got a win. We got one win at the very least that was fair because the other one just seemed to give up immediately, which was interesting. So we're going to go with one more game. We're only at 20 minutes, so we got some time. Let's see if we can get another win with this list. All right, guys, here we are for our most likely final game, uh, but we do have a Ruin Crab start, so very easy keep here. We've also got the Infernal Grasp available to us, so obviously the the... A, a very very strong keep let's go ahead and throw this ruin crab down here we've got hive coming down most likely next turn uh that's going to allow us to not only play it untapped but then infernal grasp if we need to uh let's do this um now the question becomes do we want to go ahead and kill this whenever you gain life put a 1-1 counter on it uh i think you know i actually think we're gonna play the stowaway first uh, the reason being, this allows us... We're, we're developing our board now. This is going to deal a lot more damage later in the game. It's not going to deal a ton now. Um, and this is honestly a much better target to hit. So I will happily take it. Awesome. So let's go ahead and play the Wind Robber here. Uh, let's go ahead and kill this. Um, we do lose a couple life in that process, but that is okay by me. This is unblockable, so we get to attack in. We'll just discard a land here. That's fine. 
Um, now, obviously, they could just have another Righteous Valkyrie, which is not great for us, but it is what it is. No reason not to block here. That's kind of an odd attack. Um, <laughs> do this. Mill a few more. We Have we gotten all the innkeepers? We've gotten three of the four. That's pretty good. Uh, next. Let's attack in. We get to draw a card off of this uh, and mill a card off of that. So I like that a lot. Um, we'll just play another Wind Robber. We actually can leave up the Divide by Zero uh, for free here, essentially. So honestly, we could even... Well, we'll see. All right, cool. Uh, that works for me. Let's play land, mill a few cards. Uh, let's attack, attack, attack. Uh, I'm trying to think what they could have at instant speed here. There's not a lot in the green white list. Um, I, I can't imagine there's too many things to worry about here. There's a rogue class as well. That's quite nice. So let's throw this out. Um, and I think we're just going to pass here. Uh, we can wait and do this next turn, but I'd like to leave up the divide by zero just as a, uh, a cautionary kind of thing. We don't know what they might have. Um, and so I just want to make sure we're not going to lose out. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got to be kind of careful. Uh, easy block here. If they've got a combat trick, we just get to divide by zero on the, the moon dancer. So I don't really care. Um... And they do. Perfect. So we're just going to bounce that. <laughs> um, and I think we'll just take the introduction to prophecy. Um, that just allows us to draw a couple extra cards. Wow, they didn't even replay it. That's a bit odd. Um, maybe they just have given up. It's fine by me. Let's give Menace to our stuff. I'm not playing a bunch of stuff, by the way, because we don't actually want to. Uh, we kind of just want to be able to keep this and draw extra cards and whatnot. So I'm kind of just letting that happen. The Rogue class is also going to obviously trigger here, which is great. Um, and now we've got extra stuff we can play. Oh, and there's a Solid coming. Perfect. All right, so now we just leave this up. Um, I mean, this is... This is going surprisingly well. <laughs> Let's go ahead and counter. Um, just to not worry about the Moon Dancer, we don't have a whole lot else we can do um, with with that counter. There's 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 high value stuff in this list, but uh, Moon Dancer is certainly one of those high value spells. They're very very strong. So awesome. Uh, let's mill three. Uh, let's see. I'm going to do this. So now we can just do this and get this off the field. Now we did have the Zareth Sand, which is a good card to have, but I'm just going to take the easy way out. <laughs> and I'm going to attack with the Ruin Crab, apparently, which is fine. All right. Mill a couple more cards. Uh, exile a couple more cards. There we go. Uh, we do have to discard a card here. Honestly, it might just be introduction. Um... I know we drew that and it's a good card and all, or like pulled it from the sideboard, but we don't really need it. Um, and there we go, guys. We got the win. That was perfect. That's what we wanted every single time. All right, let's talk about this deck. All right, guys. So Demir Rogues, uh, in my opinion, not as consistent as it used to be. Now that could, I, I want to be very, very clear. That could very easily just be the sample set that we had. Sometimes you get bad draws, obviously, we had a couple bad draws. Uh, we probably could have played better in certain circumstances, but I don't actually think we were far off from the generally most optimal line. Um, and even if we were, I think in those games, we kind of were able to get the win anyway. Um, I will say Ruin Crab start is as good as it's ever been. Uh, it's great to have a Ruin Crab in the deck because you're able to just start milling, milling, milling. That's going to buff up all your stuff with the Soaring Thought Thief. That does a lot more for you. Uh, and uh, obviously with Nighthawk Scavenger, it's a very powerful kind of uh, synergistic play. So overall, I really, really, I still like Demir Rogues. That being said, I don't think it's as good as it used to be. It's fun. Um, 
but I wouldn't necessarily suggest it on the latter. Uh, I think it has a lot of struggle against some of the mono white aggro lists. We saw that in, I believe, game one. Uh, it was just a struggle. They've got things that kind of slow us down, make it very difficult for us to push through a lot of damage. They've also got Skyclave apparitions, which are able to kind of deal with whatever we've got. It's just a challenging matchup, and that's okay. I think it, you're going to always find stuff like that, but... Uh, in general, I don't think it's as good as it used to be. Still think it's fun though. Uh, MTG Malone, again, thank you so much for putting this deck together. This is not my build. I want to credit uh, where credit is due. Uh, he did put this together. Very, very fun build. Rogue class, uh, an absolute all-star. I love playing that on that last game. But guys, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you are not already, and good luck in the giveaway. We will have some more gameplay hopefully later today as well, so do check that out. But until then, guys, I'll see you later. Thank you so much for watching.